All right, let's take a look at topic number 22, graphing linear equation by plotting any two points. Okay, so in the previous video, we talked about how we're gonna plot points. Okay, always start. If you wanna plot a point, always start from the origin. The X value tells us to go to the right so many or left so many. The Y value tells me to go up so many or down so many, all right? So we'll do a lot of that here today um, because we, what we have to do here is actually plotting at least two points in order to draw an equation of the line, all right? There are three, t three ways to actually graph linear equation. First one is called plotting any two points, and I will show y'all the other two as well. But let me kind of explain this word real quick. I'm, you know, from time to time, I kind of mention this. The word linear. I remember mentioning the word linear when we were solving for linear equations. So the word linear means variable raised into the first power in the equation form, okay? In the equation form, if your x is the first power, then that's called a linear equation. If we take that same linear equation and trying to graph it, okay? Then linear equation always produces a straight line in a graphing form. Every equation corresponds to a line. That's what we mean by equation of the line. The equation line means every line corresponds to some linear equation. And the graph of every line or, or, or every linear equation is going to be a line. So if I ever solving for something called a quadratic equation, Quadratic equation is x squared, and that actually produces something called a parabola. Okay, every single equation you solve is actually a graph. All right, so the most fundamental equation, the most fundamental graph is our linear equations. So equation of the line means equation is the line, the line is the same as the equation. So equation in terms of graphing always has a form called the AX plus BY equal to C, okay? We are graphing on a two-dimensional graph. So that's the reason why you got to have two variables, X and Y. The X and Y representing two dimensions, okay? Which is same as your X and Y axis. Now, if you have three variables, if your equation consists of three variables, then that's three dimension, all right? So two variables, two dimension. And when the equation of the line is written in AX plus BY equal to C, then this is called a standard form. Okay, there are other forms I will show you as well. Now, in order to draw a line, a lot of students, you know, think this is kind of silly to even mention this. To, to even draw a line, you got to have at least, and this is like something we talk about in my, uh, um, in test number four material. In order to draw a line, you got to have at least two points. Okay, so what we're gonna do is use the equation of the line to help us to find two points so we can connect them with the line. So that will actually be the equation of the line. All right. It's kind of, it's a very simple idea, but believe it or not, um, in all my years of teaching mathematics, graphing is actually the weirdest thing students do. Okay. Student, some students find it very difficult. So, right here, so for example, here is an equation of the line in the standard form. We're gonna draw a line, okay? We're gonna find two points using this equation so we can draw the line. You cannot just draw a line out of the blue, okay, any way you want. That does not make any sense because every single coordinates on the line got to satisfy this equation, okay? That's the reason why we are using the equation of the line to help us to find the points that's gonna be on the line so we can draw the line. In a, you know, that's what we're trying to do. So what, you're gonna, what we're gonna do is choose any number for X or we can choose it for Y. You pick any number you want. 
as long as it is a whole number or integers that is between negative 10 to 10. Why? Because you know you can't draw this outside um, of of your given of your given your given width and height, kind of like. All right. So on the on the homework, on the on the lecture uh, on the handwritten portion, I provide you with the graph already. So we just got to make sure the points that we end up got to be within negative 10 to 10 on the X and the Y axis. So we can choose any number, okay, for X, as long as the integers between negative 10 to 10, no fraction, no decimals, okay? We can't plot those. Then whatever that number we choose, we're gonna substitute into the equation, okay? So if I choose X, that means I'm solving for Y. If I pick a number for Y and substitute into my equation, then the only unknown will be X, then I will be solving for X. All right, so once I've done step one and step two, then I will repeat to find the second point. So when I find the second point, I have to choose a different X value. I have to choose a different Y value. I cannot choose the same one because that will be the same point. So let's try, let's try this. Okay, I'm gonna pick a number, pick a number for X. Don't matter, just don't, not too big, not too small, and try not to pick negatives. Pick a number for X. And this is the hardest part. Mr. Chan, do I just pick any number? Yes. As long as it's integers and between negative 10 to 10. <coughs> what number would you like to pick? Anybody? I like to pick zero first. And I will tell you why later on. I like to pick zero. Because zero is easy. I'm going to substitute zero for x. Okay, so I'm going to write everything else. If I substitute zero for x, that will give me zero minus y equal to negative four. Watch out for the sign. Zero minus y. Zero means there's nothing here. So this is actually negative y equal to negative four. If I divide both sides by negative one, then my y is going to equal to positive four. <clears throat> uh, you've probably seen this before. Draw a little x and y table. So when I pick x equal to zero, my y turns out to be negative four after I use the equation of the line to find the y value. Now, I must pick another number. Um, um, you don't have to always pick y, you can pick any number, you can pick for either variable and any integers between negative 10 to 10. All right, I'm gonna pick a number. I'm gonna pick negative nine. This is a little bit big, but I'm gonna purposely picking it. If I pick negative nine for X, then I'm gonna substitute this negative nine into my equation for X. And I did say don't pick negative, but I'm doing it on purpose. All right, so this X is one X. Now you'll become negative nine minus Y equal to negative four. I'm solving for y, right? Because I pick x, so I got, I got to solve for y. I'm going to move my negative y over. That become positive y. That means 4 will come to the left side. So that will give me negative 9 minus 4, which my y is negative 13. So when I pick negative 9 for x, the y is negative 13. So this point, negative nine comma negative 13 is a point on the line I'm going to draw, but I cannot use it. This, this is a correct answer, but I cannot use it to, to, to draw the line because this point is actually outside of my given negative 10 to 10. So I need to pick different points so a lot of times when I pick these X value or Y values, I'm trying to stay around zero, <laughs> okay? Not too big. So how about I just pick positive one for X? 
All right, substitute one for X, that will give me one minus Y equal to negative four. Again, move the negative Y over, move the negative four back. So that will give me Y is equal to one plus four, which Y is equal to five. So when I pick X to be one, my y value turns out to be five. Oh, well, I can sure plot that. Okay, so the x value, y value, zero comma negative four. So my two answer here, my two points are zero negative four and one comma five. Oops, sorry. Sixty. Seventy two. We'll see how big it is. There you go. That's big. I hope that's big enough. There you go. Let's do one twenty. I'm a color blue. So when we plot a point. My first point is zero comma negative four, starting at the origin. Zero for X value means I do not go right or left. Negative four for Y value tells me to go down four. So that's one point. All right. Second point, one comma five. So starting, so when I plot a point, starting from the origin, one comma five means the one tell me to go to the right one. The five tells me then go to up five. All right, go to the right one, then up five. So that will be this point. So this point is one comma five. So like the previous speed video, I said one comma five is one point, okay? You cannot say, okay, I'm gonna go to the right one, put a point there, then go up five, put another point there. I mean, you just draw, you actually just plot a two point, not one, okay? So one comma five is only one point. All right, so once I got two points, I can connect them with the line. So use some sort of straight edge to connect them. Okay, voila, this is how we actually graph an equation of the line. So here is a line and the equation is X minus Y minus four. There you go. All right, let's try another one. All right, I'm show you a trick, okay? Well, you know what? Let me purposely do something, then I will show you what's going on. So, same thing. I'm going to pick a number, you know, for X or Y. Don't matter. So, I'm going to pick Y. I'm going to pick Y to be three, okay? Why, why do I pick the number? Because I can, as long as I'm picking integers between negative 10 to 10. So substitute the number I just picked into the equation of the line. So my equation now will say five X plus four times three equal to 10. This is gonna be five X plus 12 equal to 10. All right, so solving for X, my five X is positive. So let me let it stay. Move the positive 12 over. That give me five X equals 10 minus 12. I write, you know, I like to write steps down. Five X is now equal to negative two. What do I do now to get X by itself? You get X by itself, what do I do here? Very important. And uh, divide by five. Very good. Divided by five. So after I divide both sides by five, X is equal to negative two over five. So what it's saying is when I picked 
y to be three, the x value I found that was on the line is negative two over five. This is a point on the line, but I cannot use it because I have a fraction. I cannot plot fractions or decimals on a on these kind of graph because these are what these are one units at a time. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with this point. I just cannot use it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how can we avoid coming up with a fraction answer? All right, then the, it, the steps kind of tells us, okay? The, the reason why I end up with a fraction is because at the very end, when I divide both sides by five, right? The file was trying to go into a number that is not, that is not divisible by five, okay? That's the reason why. So here is how we avoid end up with a fraction answer. In a standard form, look at the number in front of X and Y. Which one of the two number can go into 10? Five. Five can. So if five can, then pick Y. Because five was in front of X, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So you pick the other variable. Why do you want to pick the other variable? Because you want at the end divided by who? Five. Five. Okay. So what number do you pick for Y? Can you pick five? Because it will end up being a divisible. Divisible by five. That's right. You can pick any number that is divisible by five that will work. So okay. yes, I can pick five. If I pick five for X, okay. So let me kind of erase some of these. No, crap, five for Y, sorry. If I pick five for Y, so substitute five for Y, that will be five X plus 20, right? Move the mm -hmm. positive 20 over, that become negative 20. And what's 10 minus 20? Negative, negative 10. 10. So when I divide both sides by five, my answer is negative two. Okay. So when I pick Y to be five, my X is negative two. Okay, now, that's one point. I need another one. So I'm gonna continue to pick Y. And a number I'm gonna pick for Y is gonna be divisible by five. What will be a next good number to pick from? Ten. Yeah. Zero. Oh, zero? Oh. Because zero times anything is zero. zero. Mm -hmm. Right, four times zero means zero. So that term is practically gone. So I just end up with five X equal to 10. So X is equal to what? Two, that's quick. So when I pick Y to be zero, my X value is two. Okay, so here are my two points, negative two, five. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot them, negative two, five. So when I plot a point starting from the origin, negative two tell me to go where? Left two, y is five, tell me to go up five units. Two zero, starting from the origin, the x value is two, that means go to the right two. Zero for y means I do not go up or down, I stay on the x-axis, there you go. So I got my two points. I can connect them with a the line. I don't need you to find more points, okay? I just need to find at least two that will do that will suffice. And just kind of use a straight edge and connect them, okay? Please don't short me, okay? I seen people do this to me. They just draw that much. Come on, okay? That look like a baby stuff. Make a line a little bit long, but not too long, not too short. Just so I just so I know, you know. 
you connect them with a straight edge. That would be great. All right. So in the standard form, to avoid having a fraction at the end, look at the number in front of X and Y. See which one can go into, okay? So let me give you exact the same number. So I'm just switching around. What happened if it says 4X plus 5Y equal to 10? This is a whole different lines here. All right. Which number can go into 10? Uh, five can, and five is in front of the Y. So who do you pick? The four X. Then pick X. And what number are you? What number are you going to pick X for? Anything that's divisible by who? By five. There you go. Now back to the first question I did. What are the two numbers in front of X and Y? One. That's right. So both numbers can go into four, negative four. So that's why that problem, it doesn't matter who I pick, X value or Y value, it will, it will always work out with the integers coming out at the end. Okay. So, so that's the first thing you do. All right. Now, this is not a standard form. Is everybody okay? To be a standard form, what is so-called a standard form is where the X and the Y terms are on the same side. The constant term is on the opposite side of the equal sign. Okay, standard form is X and Y are, are on the same side. Right now, my X and Y are not on the same side. So if it's written in this form, okay, I'm not going to tell you what this form is, <laughs> but if it's written in Y equal something, always pick X. If it's written like Y equal something, pick X. Do you mind picking zero for X? It's quicker, right? Yeah. Substitute zero for X. And that will give me y equals three minus two times zero. Negative two times zero can kind of gone this zero. So y is three. So my first point, when I pick zero for x, y is three. All right, let's pick another one. Who would you like to pick? Any any number. Not too big, not too small. Uh Five. Somebody say five. Yeah, you go four. Four? Can't hear. Yeah, let's pick five. It don't matter. All right. So y equals three minus two times five now. That would be y equal to three minus ten. So y is equal to negative seven. So when I pick x, that, yeah, when I pick x to be five, y is negative seven. All right, zero three. Starting from the origin, zero three. Where do I go? Zero for x means I do not go right or left. Y value is three, so I go up three. Right there. Five comma negative seven. The five for x value tell me to go to the right five. Then the y value is negative seven tell me to go down seven. This down five, six, seven, right there. Now, once I plot the two points, I can connect them with a line. There you go, that's it. Okay. Again, y equal to something, we pick x. So this is, this is also, Another example, pick X. So I think by now, student, you know, y'all will be like, okay, I'm gonna pick zero first. That's a good choice. That's a, that is a very good choice. 
Okay, just watch out for your signs, okay? Two third times zero is zero. And the five is a positive. So y is equal to positive five. All right, cool bean. Now, what do you think will be the next point that we'll need to pick? So I can avoid having a fraction answer. What would be a good X value I need to pick next? So I don't, so I'm not gonna end up with any fractions. Give you a hint. What do we know, what, what do we learn about when we're dealing with a fraction equation? What was that technique we used? Well, if I have a fraction equation, what was that technique called? If I have a fraction equation back on the test number one materials. Because when we're solving for fraction equations, we can work with the fraction or we can clear the fraction. We can clear the fraction by doing what? Multiply every term by the LCD. What is my denominator? three. So that means I can pick any number that is divisible by three. You will cancel out that three in the bottom. Watch. I'm, I'm just going to pick three. That's why that technique is useful. If I pick x to be three, right, that will be y equals two over three times three plus five. And what happens? My first term, two third times three means two thirds times three over one. So for module two, we learn how to reduce fraction first, top three, bottom three cancels out. What's the only thing left for my first term? The two. So the first term is just a two. Then my second term is, is positive five. So my y value is seven. There you go, that's two points. Okay, coming handy. And a lot of students say, well, Ms. Mr. Chan, I have a graphing calculator. Okay, I have a graphing calculator. I can just find these points on the graphing calculator. I do agree with you, but you still gotta show me all these work. Okay, so these handwritten portion that, that you need to, um, these handwritten portion that where well, you have to do everything by hand, you actually need to show me all these work I'm showing you. Plus, I can actually do this. I can actually find the two points and draw a line quicker than you can actually put in a calculator, believe it or not. Okay, I will show y'all, I will show y'all um, the third way of plotting two points, okay, will actually be super quick. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plot these two. So this is the most fundamental way of graphing an equation on the line is by plotting two points, zero, five, X is zero means I do not go right or left. I simply go up five. All right, three, seven means I go to the right three from the origin and then up seven. All right, it'll be right here. Okay, connect them with the line and that's it. All right, so in this video, we quickly talk about what an equation of the line is and how we actually use the equation of the line, okay, to find the other points, the other value, so we can actually plot two points of the line and connect them with the line. All right, so that will conclude this video. Thank you for watching.